So I'm in the market for the perfect retro gaming device, and it seems the market has differing opinions on what that perfect is. So let's establish some ground rules. Has to be around the time this guy was a legend, and around this time nothing happened. It needs to play DOS games. It also needs to play Win3.x games. It should be portable. And let's add a 3D graphics card to extend what it will play. For reference, we are going to be using a mobile Pentium 4M processor clocked at 2.2 gigahertz with 512 megs of RAM. All right, now that we've got Windows 98 installed, let's go ahead and play some Master of Magic. All we got to do is create a new game, accept some options, and... What the f***? All right, since we scratched off Master of Magic, let's try Master of Orion. Maybe we'll get better results. Surely this game will give me the results I'm looking for. Hmm. Well played, 98. Well played. All right, so it's obvious I'm going to have to bring out the big guns for this operation. So let's see our friend config.sys. So you might be wondering what this warning is about. And between us, it's really about nothing. We don't need those peripherals. In fact, all it means is games are more better. All right, so with this configuration, you should be pretty safe with a D400 or an M6, but your mileage may vary. Now, since this ThinkPad only has a SoundMax sound card that emulates a sound blaster, we're gonna go over and set the MIDI to general MIDI and the sound effects to an emulated sound blaster. Oh my gosh, that audio is super crunchy. And that is exactly what I'm hearing out of the laptop when I play it. While the game goes at a decent clip, the audio is just so jarring. Another issue I have with the SoundMax emulated sound blaster is that whenever there is a battle sequence in this game, it seems to freeze every time that a troop makes a movement. Go ahead and see what I'm talking about right here. Firing up DOSBox fixes most of the audio issues, but because of the overhead, performance takes a massive hit. Let's see if Doom 2 fares any better as far as the sound settings go. So firing up Doom, it sounds pretty good. It sounds exactly how I'd expect it, despite it not having an OLP chip. The sounds are good. There's no crackling. There's no crunchiness. There's no weirdness with the audio, and it plays like a champ. The next game on my list that I want to test out is Lemmings. Unfortunately, due to graphic drivers, the UI elements below are almost completely blacked out. To confirm my hunch, I decided to drop down to MS-DOS and see what was going on. And sure enough, the graphical glitch is due to a Windows driver error. So far, it's not looking too good for the R40. But let's go ahead and fire up Duke Nukem and see if it fares any better. Once again, we have the same crackling and popping through the audio. While the game is playable, I'd rather just end it on the spot. Next on our list is Descent. While it wasn't as popular as Doom or Duke Nukem back in the day, it has quite a following.
Whoa, it looks like we'll need to speed limit this one in DOSBox. The game is completely unplayable using the command prompt. Next on our hit list is the classic XCOM UFO Defense. The game was so popular it inspired a remake back in 2012. While the game plays a bit fast when in global view, the cracks really start to show during strategic battle maps. Yeah, it's pretty unplayable when you're trying to scroll. We can see that running DOS games through the Windows command prompt has some major compatibility issues. And running in bare DOS without drivers would mean that we would need to pick up a 16-bit sound card from that era to achieve any sound. Running these games in DOSBox gives us a major performance hit and makes some of these games completely unplayable. Let's go over some games I fully expect to work, beginning with Need for Speed. Electronic Arts. Three, two, one, go! As we can see, Need for Speed High Stakes runs flawlessly on this machine. But what about Need for Speed Underground 2? Go ahead, Unit 316. I can't keep up. Breaking off pursuit of the Diablo. Copy. Let's see how Fury 3 fares. Well, it's no surprise that most Windows-based games work well on 98, especially the older ones. However, this Windows 3.1 game called Interspace seems to drift in and out of audio depending on sound effects getting triggered. There's another game that plays like this, but it's actually multiplayer. It was one of the first massively multiplayer games in the late 90s. Can we still do online play with Windows 98 in 2022? Do these games even exist? To find out, I installed a mini PCI wireless card to see what the ThinkPad R40 was capable of. Unfortunately, upon booting up, I was greeted with this little gem of an error. Evidently, it's not an approved card. That is annoying, but it's not like we can't bypass it. Surprisingly enough, Continuum is still around. This game was the bomb back in the late 90s and it seems to still be supported, although most of the other servers are offline. Oh wow, and people are still playing it too. I wonder if Ultima Online can still be played. While the retail version of Ultima Online cannot be played on Windows 98, there is a private server called Second Age that allows you to play it like the old days. Speaking of private servers, let's see if we can still play World of Warcraft. Hmm. While the game is technically playable, the texture rendering is all over the place. This last game is an oldie but a goodie. Eh, 
And I guess this game wasn't popular enough to create private servers. All that is left is a training ground where you can explore the map. Well, that about does it for this video, but it doesn't conclude the R40's capabilities. Next time, I'm going to stack these two laptops with Windows XP, and I have a feeling you'll be pretty surprised. If you like this video, or have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. And like always, I'll see you next time. Down below. And like always, if you like this video, if you like this video, or you have any questions or comments,